Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Toadstead. Now, what we have here, besides my shaky hands because I'm walking, we're going to try and sneak up on Narby. Ah, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, trying to hold this free hand while I'm walking is a little difficult. This is Narby. This is our boar. For those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen him from when he was little. Well, he's no longer little. <laughs> and he wants his belly rubbed. Okay. Wasn't how I was planning on starting this out, but he does like his belly rubbed. Which a good boy, huh? That's a happy pig right there. <laughs> All right, well, as the title says, this isn't about, you know, how to say good morning to your pig. What this is about is uh, we had to separate Narby from Hillary over there. She's in that pen. And the way we had to do it was we had to put in a small electric fence. And that's what I want to show you today. And we'll just start from basically what we did. There's the perimeter fence out there. And what we added were these small pins inside the field. These are about three feet long. And as you can see, they've got small clips for the wire. Now you can use these for wire or for um, the ribbon type. Now Narby, <laughs> as you can see, he isn't exactly small. So we wanted to have something that was gonna tickle him really good, keep him away from the edges but something that we could move around, which we'll talk about later. Over in the corners where we had to support everything, we went ahead and drove some smaller T-posts. Now these little connectors here, they're pretty self-explanatory. The top of them pops off, and then again, you can use wire or uh, the ribbon on these, and they just clip onto the, uh, onto the T-posts. Let's take a look. At the other end, they just run down. Sorry about the shadows. This is a, it's a low budget kind of deal here. And you know what? Okay, let's go look at the other end. That'll be easier. Plus, we'll confuse him because he'll start, he'll start running in this direction. He's a pretty sociable guy. Now they make. You can purchase all different kinds of connectors for your fence. And, but we had to do this as, as, just as cheap as we possibly could. Now this fence is backwards. You'll notice that the nubs on the T-posts are facing in this direction. And that quite frankly was a screw up when we were putting the fence on. They would be facing the other way. Fortunately, um, the manufacturer does make the little insulators that'll go on one side or the other. That works out good. But when we got to the fence post here, we had to be able to terminate as well as do some other things. So what we did in the corners by this, and hopefully that's showing up because this is difficult for me to see, but the uh, each place where it turns, that's nothing more than a piece of um, you call it, we call it fuel line. It's very, very thick rubber hose. And, uh, <laughs> basically I slid it from one end. I slid it here from one end about halfway down, put the wire through it, and then screwed the whole kit and caboodle to the fence. And that's worked out real well so far. The fence now has been up Oh, for about, well, I guess about two months. And that's how we did our corners. That's also how we terminated it at each end. I'm not going to get in a pen with him. But down here, where it attaches, what it does is it goes from the fence and terminates at the corner of the pen. And then around the corner of the other side, it terminates on the other side of the gate. So we have a little chute right here for him to go back and forth. Now, we did have a little problem originally because dummy here he got into that little narrow spot right behind the, the water and the feeder buckets 
he got in there by the gate. That's the gate right there is the gate to go into the uh, pig pen. And I guess maybe his butt touched up against the fence. He got a good tickle, went a little bonkers, broke the fence, and got out. Now, fortunately for us, you know, once dinner time came around, just a matter of filling up his deal, and he came right back inside, and we fixed the fence. And then we ended up putting, in one of my previous videos, you can see the blue uh, part of the barrel that's got the concrete in the bottom and his feeder. We put them both right there so he won't go into that little spot anymore. We thought about making the fence go over to the back of the, the shed part, but quite frankly, we need that chute. We need that chute right there so they can go back and forth. Now, as far as the controller, originally, we really, really wanted to use a solar controller, but money just said no. So what we have here, there's the electrical line, the yellow, just an old extension cord is really all it is, and it runs back along the fence, goes into the shop, and it's just plugged in. That's a heavy gauge cord, so there's no problem. And then you can see, let me get around. I don't want to accidentally touch something. As entertaining as that would be for you, if you can see that bungee cord, we've just got a bucket here. I want to make sure I don't get tickled. Huh. There's a bungee cord right there. That's attached to the handle of the bucket and then down and attached to the fence. And just puts tension on the bucket so it won't... Ah, see, I just got nailed. So it won't... Uh, you go look up underneath, and there's the controller up underneath it. Keeps it off, keeps the rain off the controller. Whew! That was a nice little tickle there. Wow, oh, zap. Yeah, I know why you don't go near, near that fence there, big guy. <laughs> anyway, so that's feeds the hot side of the controller right down here, feeds into our wires. Uh, a little homemade. Twist, just twisted all the wires on, got connectors. They make connectors for that, but we're trying to keep this inexpensive for now. The ground rod, you can see the ground wire coming down right here. And then it goes down. And I've got not one, not two, but three ground rods going to the ground. Now this ground here is loamy sand. Oop, he just got tickled. <laughs> anyway, this ground is loamy sand, so it conducts really well, especially when I'm stupid and standing on wet grass and touch the thing. But what I did is I took an eight-foot ground rod and cut it into three sections and drove three separately, and then you can't really see it in the grass, but it runs right along here. And uh, as you heard from me getting zapped and from uh, Narby getting close, and uh, well, he's, he's going to get hit again if he's not careful, uh, it works just fine. Now here's something I want to show you if you're going to get into the electric fences. This is one of the things. You see how he's rooted out around in here making him a little bed? Well, you can see some of that dirt is starting to get close to the bottom of the three they're hard to show up on camera. There's actually three strands. One, two, three. And uh, the fence can basically make contact with the ground via wet grass or, in this case, dirt. I'm going to have to come around and fix that real quick. But this section here, it's plenty big enough. He's having a good time rooting. <laughs> but it's plenty big enough for him. And the total cost, now we were, I will admit, we were gifted the uh, the controller. But they run 30 or 40 bucks. The only difference with ours, and I'm not an electric fence uh, expert or anything, but ours is a constant charge. In other words, uh, most of your electric fences pulse. You know, every second or so they pulse. So you have, so the animal has to stay in contact with the thing uh, long enough for it to pulse and zap them. This one's on all the time. Now, the upside to it is when Narby, or me, gets into it, uh, there's no in-between pulse. It's, it's there. It's happening. Bang. Um, the downside to it 
is if you don't keep the grass trim and as you can see we got to do a little grass trimming and like I mentioned we have to do a little bit of the dirt trimming um, it does gra you know, it'll ground out faster right <laughs> it's a problem um, the other problem and this has happened once is we had a some bird I don't know it was a starling or something came down and I didn't see it happen but I found it afterwards came down and evidently landed on the on the electric fence right over here now because it pulsed it didn't pulse the bird just didn't get zapped and fly away the bird actually landed on it and if you've ever seen it in the movies you know somebody touches something electrical and they buzz and, oh, and they can't let go I think that's what happened to the bird because I found Mr. Bird um, stiff as a board with his feet still around the top deal leaning up against the fence uh, and he had gone off to the happy hunting grounds he was dead uh, which Miles didn't mind at all because Miles had bird for dinner but that that's the Toadstead's electric fence so we'll get back to the original cost um, the size we're using here uh, if you were to buy one just like it today somewhere between 40 and 60 dollars the little pins are a couple bucks a piece and the wire gosh I had the wire around I don't remember what I paid for it but it wasn't much I'd, I'd say max even including the little um, package of these it was like 10 bucks for 20 of them which I don't even think see 3 6 9 12 15 we only used 18 out of the pack of 20 or 25 so definitely under 150 bucks we were able to throw this together and when you couple that with the barrel uh, waterer which again is in a different video and we just have a uh, that's a semi soft rubber feed bucket that he does throw it around and play with it and all that and it is rubber so if it does get up against the fence which it does then uh, we don't have to worry about that but no. that's the Toadstead's electric fence, and I can hear Hillary in there giving us a hard time. But, so hey, what, 150 160 bucks, and uh, we have an electric fence up and running. And now uh, he's turned his back on me because I'm not paying attention to him. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to take off and go back to work. See you next time around.